most of the way that the lower house approached the changes that needed to happen to part 4A of the Births, Deaths and Marriages Act um, last year when the original amendments were considered in this place, um, it was logical to, in essence, rewrite that section of the Act uh, as an amendment. Mm. But in actual fact, most of what exists right now in Part 4A of the Births, Deaths and Marriages Act was replicated in the words of that amendment. Um, I won't go back over what the Premier said about this being unconsulted or not well considered and that there are uncertainties <coughs> um, re remaining. I don't agree with those statements. There's been uh, months and months of public consideration and, and public um, uh, consultation on these changes. Uh, but there is one part that I feel I need to respond to in what the Premier said, which is that the Solicitor General uh, expressed concerns. We know that the attorney has waived uh, privilege in regards to the Solicitor General's advice, um, but has not released his advice. I would ask the Premier his, uh, his views on whether or not um, he would release that advice. But my understanding is that that advice was given on the basis of the bill that was presented to the Upper House. Yep. So the advice was not given on the amendments that the member for Murchison and others had um, had drafted, and indeed the concerns that he raised, many of them were dealt with in those amendments that were moved by the independent members in the Upper House. I find it extraordinary that the government would go to such lengths as they are going to now uh, to alienate those members of the Upper House who worked so hard on, in the government's words, fixing uh, the amendments that were attempted in the Lower House. Uh, these have been done in good faith and they've been done to retain the essence of what was attempted in the Lower House and to achieve it in a way that represents good law, Mr Chair. Um, from my memory, the, um, <coughs> the, one of the issues that the Solicitor General raised as a concern was that uh, changes represented in the bill and in the amendments may uh, cause problems for police. Uh, conducting searches on transgender and gender diverse people. Um, the member for Murchison followed that up quite rigorously with the Commissioner of Police who explained that they already have policies and procedures in place for when, when searches are required on people who are transgender or gender diverse or non-binary, that kind of thing. Um, notwithstanding that, the point that I want to make here is that the fact that those problems might occur is not a reason not to support the reforms that we're changing and suggesting here. It's a demonstration of the fact that there are problems with those policies and those uh, behaviours of public service agencies who don't have legislation or policies in place um, that deal with the fact that there are transgender people in our community and there are transgender people and gender diverse in our community who um, interact with every part of our community, education, health, justice, police and so on. So I think that that advice from the Solicitor General should motivate the government to, in fact, improve other areas of the law yes. that yeah. don't treat people the way that they should expect to be treated by their state, Mr Chair. And what this change does, um, uh, this amendment from the Upper House, is to actually uh, articulate the fact that we're removing the current... Uh, test, if you like, of how somebody is to have their gender marker change on their birth certificate, which at the moment is divorce and surgery. So if you remove the existing processes, they must be replaced with something else. And these changes replace them with a new process for how uh, somebody would go about having their gender marker changed on their printed birth certificate and identity documents. But despite that, um, and despite the Upper House members giving every impression that they understood the intent of those changes, they understood uh, the differences that the Member for Murchison's changes represented as compared to what was passed in the Lower House. Senior members of the government, Mr Chair, have continued to bandy about things that are completely ill-informed and wrong, Mr Chair. And I'll give an example of a radio interview that was given uh, last week by a very senior member of the, of the uh, 
government. She was asked, will, under these changes, will parents who have now have the option of putting a sex on a birth certificate of their child be able to put a sex that's demonstrably not the biological sex of the child? The answer to that question should have been to the radio interviewer, no, that won't be possible under these changes because all children at birth will be registered male or female, Mr Chair. But that's not what the senior member of the government said. She said it's hard to say at the minute because it's, it's not finished yet. He said, so you don't know the answer to that question? Because I thought that's pretty obvious. If you have the opportunity as a parent to make these sorts of judgments, you look at your little girl and you go, oh, well, we want to call him Jack. We'll put him down as a boy. Is that possible? The answer to that question should have been, no, that's not possible under these changes. It's not possible under existing law and it won't be possible if these changes pass. But her answer to that question was, at the moment, that's a very real possibility. Shame. That's heartbreaking to know. Like, I, I want to do a good job in this place. But how do, you, how do you combat that? When someone's willing to just say something that's completely a distortion of well, everything that they've well, just heard in weeks and months of consultation and writing amendments and debating amendments and speaking to one another, I don't have the words for it, Mr Chair. I wish I did. But it is hard to come up against people who will just do and say whatever is required to make something go away, regardless of the veracity of those claims. And I was really disappointed to hear that interview. But we will be supporting this change. Um, it's a very well-written and very thorough um, new piece of legislation that will uh, replace the current requirements and um, laws regarding how gender changes are dealt with under Tasmanian law. Thank you, Mr Chair. Mr. Chair. Member for Clark, Mr. Uh, thank you.